discuss the possibility of massive earthquakes in the Himalayan regions of South Asia. Okay. So I'm giving you an answer structure here. The answer is no. You start with an introduction and say, Himalayas are young, fold mountains, tectonic active zones. These are areas which have, these are plate boundaries, okay? and they are seismic zone. Anybody knows what seismic zone are Himalayas in? Zone 4, zone 5, these are active seismic zones. You probably can draw the map of India. You know the seismic map of India? Okay. So you could draw the seismic map of India. You can see your textbook and draw it. In uh, recent times, there have been numerous earthquakes. Okay. The most uh, uh, infamous was okay, in Kathmandu, 2015. Kathmandu earthquake. And uh, 2020 may hua hai, 2021 this year, just recently we had not very far away again, Amritsar, like Uzbekistan, mentioned those areas, Afghanistan. 2020 has seen in parts of Kashmir earthquakes, Bhutan earthquakes. So numerous earthquakes we already have seen. And also mentioned here, the Himalayas have three reverse faults. We have the main central thrust, we have the main boundary fault, and we have the Himalayan front fault. And all of these are okay, earthquake zones. We talk about the, the peninsular plateau is under thrusting, basically active zones. And then you will say that Himalayas, Himalayas have, have massive, uh, uh, seismic gaps. Anybody knows what are seismic gaps? Yeah, we, these are areas which these are, what are these? These are basically active zones. The active zones along crustal thrust and faults that have not witnessed a significant earthquakes and are having thrusts and force build up without adequate release of energy. So ye kya hai? Himalayas have massive seismic gaps. So seismic gaps kya hote hai? That they are active zones. Yaha par activity chal raha hai. There's some compression going on, thrusting going on, some kind of activity is going on. But they have not witnessed significant or enough earthquakes. The force is building up. The energy is building up here. And there is not with, without. And there is no adequate release of energy. The active zones along crustal thrust and falls that have not witnessed significant earthquakes and are having thrusts and forces build up. Here force build up. You know, it's like, uh, it is literally like uh, energy is piling up there. But there is no release. There is no adequate release of energy. Okay. It was seismic gap in India, mein, the central Himalayas and the Nepal Himalayas are such gaps. Yeah. So, this area, mein, we are most likely to have massive earthquakes. This future future may these can be areas of massive earthquakes or uh, central himalayas and and nepal himalayas are such seismic gaps they are such gaps this region has been accumulating energy since the last 500 years though there have been earthquakes so, right on three, four years. Kap kap hua hai earthquakes, 1803 mein hua hai, 1905 mein hua hai. Uh, we had 1991 mein Uttar Kashi earthquake hua hai. Okay, we have had 1999, we had Chamoli earthquake. 
uh, 2005 mein kashmir and 2015 mein kathmandu though we have had earthquakes earthquakes but these earthquakes the average range the average the average range of earthquakes was in the range of 6.8 to about 7 7.5 in the richter scale itne earthquakes to hue hain 7 7.5 in the richter scale for adequate release of energy we need at least estimates kya hain estimates tell us for adequate release of energy we need earthquakes averaging more than 8 to 9 richter scale or more than ab ek ye unit yaad kar lo or more than 10 to 15 magnitude moment i do not know what this unit means okay this is also written as mw magnitude moment unit so a technical term you best remember this but these are and remember some of this data has been predicted by dn wadia institute ye kafi news mein hai of uh, geology yeah this one type of uh, unit okay for earthquake measurement okay so i was seeing some articles they have used it so i didn't bother looking into what they are okay and ye wale jo hain these are relatively these are relatively not as significant in the energy release they are also referred to as blind earthquakes so what we are saying is that there are seismic gaps so even if we have earthquakes the earthquakes are not really very powerful ones okay we need much much more powerful for the energy to release the weaker ones which have been devastating but they refer to as blind earthquakes uh, it is estimated that there are uh, six main vulnerable regions we talking about kishtwar in kashmir nahan in himachal pradesh we have almoda in uttarakhand we have sikkim we have west bhutan and arunachal pradesh these are the six main vulnerable regions okay these can expect big ones nahan in himachal pradesh this is kashmir this is uttaranchal sikkim bhutan and arunachal pradesh ye six vulnerable regions hain six vulnerable regions now in terms of impact okay so likh lijiye aap in terms of impact northern plains are very vulnerable okay and they are most vulnerable to something called as soil liquefaction ye term suna hai aapne what happens northern plains are very vulnerable basically the soil loses rigidity literally is the soil starts flowing soil liquefaction uh, in in 1943 and 1950 ke earthquake mein okay uh, bengal assam and bihar were very badly impacted impacted delhi is just about 200 kilometers from the active faults so delhi is also very very okay vulnerable i think that's good enough for a 10 mark answer and you can always move towards saying in the conclusion may you can talk about disaster management okay uh, construction construction bylaws you can talk about awareness earthquake resistant okay buildings etc ठीक है लेट दिस बी द कंक्लूजन ओके सो अर्थक्वेक पे आई थिंक दिस इज अ डिसेंट अमाउंट ऑफ कंटेंट ओके आई एम एक्सपेक्टिंग कि कुछ ना कुछ पूछ ही देगा रिलेटेड टू द हिमालयस